How did Jesus equip the disciples? Let's look at that. Matthew 10 verse 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and disease. I want you to notice something, right? Jesus never sent anybody out to preach the gospel without giving them power to cast out demons. Just didn't happen that way. It's not scriptural to send people out on evangelism even without equipping them to deal with evil spirits. The first instruction he gave them was to cast out devils and then heal the sick. And look at verse 7 and 8. This is how they were supposed to do it. As you go, preach the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That just means preach that the kingdom of heaven is accessible to everyone. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. And he said to them, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. Now, I have committed my life to practicing this and so should every single one of you every believer everywhere and i've seen all of those things happen including raising the dead i was ministering with a evangelist called steve Ryder, an, an evangelist from australia and um, he raised two people from the dead one of them was a baby whom someone gave up to him on the stage before he'd even got preaching. I mean, I wonder what we would do. We haven't even preached a sermon yet and someone hands us a dead baby. He didn't even know what to do. He just lifted the baby up. The baby was not breathing. Lifted the baby up to heaven and all Steve said is, Father. And the baby came to life. Amen. We're called to do that. I'm actively looking for corpses. And that sounds weird. I don't, I don't hang around cemeteries. <laughs> but if I happen to stumble across someone who just died, guess what? I am commanded by Jesus to raise them. So we're not just told to go preach the kingdom. We're told to go and demonstrate the kingdom. Amen. The ministry of Jesus has not changed. Everybody say it's not changed. Why should we try and change it? We can't do that. Our aim is to just simply follow Jesus' instructions. Here we go, Luke 10.1. This is what else he instructed. He told the 70 and he sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Now we don't get the instructions of them casting out demons in that verse, but we know it must have happened because in verse 17, when they returned with joy, they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. So what impressed them the most? The fact that they had authority over demons. Let's proclaim together. I want us to proclaim together. Thank you, Lord, that, thank you, Lord. that even the demons, even the demons are, subject are subject to us in your name. Let's go to the Great Commission. Let's look at that. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not. Right. I want, I want to just slide something in there right now. Regarding water baptism. No believer is promised salvation in the New Testament without being water baptized. And so we make a habit of, of getting people water baptized immediately after they get saved. Ask my wife how many people we've baptized in our bathtub. <laughs> so many people. We baptized how many, Kevin, in Shannon Beach just a few weeks ago? Nine people who come out from the revivals. We command them to be water baptized immediately. Okay. You might say, I believe and I'm saved without being water baptized. But hey, could be, but that's your risk. Jesus says those who believe and are baptized. That's not a salvation of works. It's just simply following his command. So I personally wouldn't take that risk. Okay. 
And then in verse 17, he says, these signs will follow those who believe. What's the first sign? They will cast out demons. See, I'm not making this up. Can we improve on Jesus' methods? No. That's the first of the five signs. See, we hear a lot about speaking in new tongues. I mean, I speak in tongues, and many of you do, but you know, laying on of hands on the sick comes fifth. But the first sign is cast out demons. And in Matthew 28, let's continue. Here it, here it is again. The Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples. And then it says, I've abbreviated it, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. Why do I bring that up? Well, amongst all the things that Jesus commanded, we are commanded to cast out demons. So he's saying, when you go make disciples, teach them to cast out demons. And when they make disciples, they're going to teach them to cast out demons. And if the church obeyed this simple process for 19 centuries, everybody will be doing it. Amen. But unfortunately, the church has tried to improve on the ministry of Jesus and made a mess. Hmm? We have to understand, right, there are two opposing kingdoms in the universe. And when we begin to deal with demons, the two kingdoms come right out into the open. In fact, Jesus was accused of casting out demons by the prince of demons, Beelzebub, the devil. And here was his answer. Listen to this. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they'll be your judges. Now, this is a very, very important statement Jesus made. He says, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Yes. This, I put it to you, is the single greatest sign that the kingdom of God has come. When that opposing rival kingdom is exposed, brought out into the open and cast out of people's lives. That's evidence of the kingdom of God coming. You know, some people, when, when, when you pray for them for deliverance, they, the demons go out quietly. Others drop down, they convulse. Others scream, others cough. Whatever noises are being made, to me, even if it's screaming or vomiting, sometimes demons come out with substances because they're embedded in people's abdomen. However way they come out, whatever noise is made, you know what, that's better, that, that sounds better to me than listening to Mozart or Beethoven or the greatest worship music. Am I weird? I don't think so, I don't think I'm weird. <laughs> Maybe some of you might think. And I'll tell you why. Because that's the sound of people getting set free. Yeah, amen, amen. Freedom. The sound of freedom. Come on. Hallelujah. It does. It's the, it's, it's, it's the kingdom of darkness being exposed. See, demons try and hide and they're being exposed by the presence of Jesus. And when they meet, the light of his kingdom, it overcomes the darkness and Satan hates that. There are two things that the devil hates the most. Number one, the reality of demons. He tries to sort of keep that invisible. Like, oh, they don't exist. You know, like the world is just material, materialism. Okay. Or he hates, if you've discovered that they do exist, he hates the fact that Jesus has given us authority over demons because that reveals the clash between the two kingdoms. It reveals the supremacy and victory that the kingdom of Jesus Christ has over the kingdom of darkness. And Satan has done a lot of work in the church over the centuries to suppress this revelation that we have authority over all the enemy. Because it will bring his kingdom out into the open and inflict utter defeat. Satan doesn't want that. In fact, all the miracles Jesus did in the New Testament, including raising the dead, healing the sick, miraculous provision. There's one miracle that's never recorded in the Old Testament. All right. They're all recorded except one. And that's casting out demons. You won't find that in the Old Testament. Why is that? 
I believe it's the distinctive mark of New Testament ministry. Amen.